cabinet announcement. I want to hear your reactions to the cabinet announcement. The new faces, the old faces came back, and new ministers have been created. Uh, the new minister of uh, sorry, there's a new minister of youth, a different minister from sports now. What's your reactions to that? I want to hear from you this morning. Please do request the mic. I want to hear from you your reactions around the cabinet announcement. In the meantime, uh, let's go into the news headlines. Okay, so remember for the news, go to site.org.zw. Uh, the first story that I'm going to read is headline Police arrest 12 suspects of violence at Barberfield Stadium. The Zimbabwe Republic Police said Tarapi has confirmed that 12 suspects have been arrested in connection with the public violence which occurred at Barberfield Stadium on Sunday. National Spokesperson Assistant Commissioner Ponya said two suspects were for contravening the Firearms Act, while four are being held for criminal nuisance and six for public violence. Right, I want to fact check something here. Professor Nuba did not tweet on Triple C imposition of Bula Mayor. Uh, fact check Professor Nuba did not tweet on the Triple C imposition of Bula Mayor. Uh, claim uh, Professor Welshman Nuba slams uh, Susan College for Change Triple C for imposing a mayor for Bula. That's incorrect. A screenshot of a tweet in pub publicly uh, posted by uh, uh, Professor Welshman Nuba urging uh, Triple C to allow councillors uh, to choose their own mayor instead of a party imposing has gone viral on social media. Uh, congratulations to Triple C Bulaya councillors sworn in today. However, uh, I wish the party could allow Democrats to prevail in the election of Bulaya mayor and deputy instead of imposition. I read the tweet. Did Professor Nuba tweet that? No, he didn't tweet that. Uh, Professor Nuba's Twitter account is not verified. The screenshot was a verified with a, a Twitter page. So that's a, a false um, a, 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 a screenshot there being shared by people's social media. Did, you know, did not treat that yeah it looks like you know uh we are still you know uh, missed misinformation and disinformation so uh site uh, also does fake checking uh check out uh our page uh to you know get uh confirmed information so the other story that i'm going to read is headline pollard to remain in place Mnangagwa. president emerson Mnangagwa has said that the political actors dialogue pollard will remain in place as it is a useful platform for political parties to engage the platform was formed in may 2019 and made up of some pf and some of the smaller opposition political parties that participated in the 2018 polls so speaking to the media after announcing the new cabinet on monday Mnangagwa Nangakwa said that Pollard has been extremely useful and that he would like to see all political parties that contested in the 2023 elections participate. Right, quite interesting. They remember today at uh, 2 p.m. there's going to be a Wulaya full council meeting, the first Wulaya full council meeting. Uh, do look into side Facebook page to follow that Wulaya, the, the Wulaya city council first full full, city, full 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 council meeting there. We're going to see the mayor and the deputy mayor there uh, speaking to councillors in their full uh, full council meeting this this afternoon at 2 p.m. Right, uh, the meetings are happening throughout man, the, the country. A lot of things. What's trending on the timeline this morning? Okay, so on my timeline, Brighton, I'm seeing, um, let me check. Kesti Coventry is Kesti Coventry is turning, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I remember during the announcement of the ministers, uh, one journalist asked President Muslim Nangaka to say, uh, people have been saying she's been incompetent, she's been failing to, to deliver one uh, some of her task. Mm -hmm. And Muslim Nangaka said, no, I'm appointing her because I've seen she's, she's competent. She's been doing very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, now she's trending again on Twitter. Uh, I saw you speaking about the the, the, the BF match between Dynamos and Helena. So, like, I'm waiting for the reports from the both teams. Mm -hmm. And then I'll intervene and speak about the, the violence that happened in the BF on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Quite interesting there, uh, coming from Kesko Venter. But also now, she is a female uh, deputy minister. That, that oh, minister, yes, yeah? yeah. She's a female deputy minister. Yeah, and uh, also Mave Terra is also trending. Yeah, man. She's been trending for copying and pasting uh, issues of ICT. She's now the new minister of ICT. Mm -hmm. And then uh, over the week, over the overnight, she has been pasting, copying and pasting things from Google, man, as a minister. Well, quite shocking, yeah. But guys, I want to hear from you this morning. What are your reactions in terms of the cabinet announcement? Uh, let's see, we have a guest there just joining us. There is Maziwa. Maziwa in Good morning. Good morning. I'm supposed to be sleeping, but I'm supposed to be asleep because it's like 2.30 a.m. my time. And my reaction before I fall asleep, my reaction to the cabinet is that this is a this is a very good distraction from what we are supposed to be focusing on. We're supposed to be focusing on removing Zanu from power. And we're busy. Uh, now we're all busy every day for the past two, three days talking about cabinet. That is irrelevant. It's what ZANU does. This is ZANU government and ZANU is doing what ZANU wants to do. 
because they are in power. So if we don't like any of whatever they're doing, we need to figure out how to remove them from the seats. Only the people can remove them from the seats. So this is just a, dis a, just a distraction. It's irrelevant to even talk about it. We're in an autocratic state uh, ruled by detectors and all stuff. Well, we are busy focusing on this cabinet and what blah. Hey, ufaka bantu wa waki wa tintin. Iko litele ya pumala. The more important things are happening. Iko litele ya pumala, ya pumama buzz. Gold buzz are moving out of the country, which is what we're supposed to be looking at and focusing on. Um, that's what I'm going to say. That's my reaction. Very important, my dear. Well, thank you, uh, Mazua Nkosi, for your contribution this morning. Uh, as you said, you're going to be going to sleep. Uh, I hope you have a good night's sleep. And uh, yeah, uh, she's saying uh, if, when she looks at this, uh, she feels, you know, it's just a distraction. Mm -hmm. We should be looking at other things. But yeah, let's move on to another speaker there. Let's hear from Mandaza. Good morning, Mandaza Douglas. And if again, Geneva, service Everyone, uh, the speaker we just spoke, Masivo, there, she exactly took some of the words there. It's uh, it's a recycle of dead wood. Uh, we're mixing up the dead wood and uh, some of it, some wet wood to try and start a fire up. The Zimbabwean economy hasn't been doing well for the last 20-something years. We're going backwards. But this doesn't look like a cabinet that is going to change anything in Zimbabwe, bring investors in or bring any economic or anything or education. It's just, uh, it's a literally slap in the face for all Zimbabweans who had it. even a little hope after that is uh, shameful elections that you may think that you may bring a cabinet that will try to change something. Everybody who's been there is the same old people. Nothing against him to live but the economy has failed to deliver there. You've got people like Soda Jemu, who's been the Minister of Energy, just being changed to something else. Uh, people like Stembi Sonyoni, who's been, uh, uh, she's been, I can, I can still remember in the 90s, you already been in Zanu PF and doing some of the things there. Nothing that they're going to do. And this, uh, bringing all the kids to be in the cabinet, it's it's such a shameful thing uh, for President Mnangagwa to do. I thought to you this. Um, when I used to live in the UK, uh, these boys used to live um, in a hotel owned by this um, one of the Zimbabwean, uh, is, a, is a British Zimbabwean, and uh, now he lives in Zimbabwe permanently, named uh, Nicholas Van Hoostrand. These boys used to have parties every other weekend. Every other weekend, Nangalko's sons were staying in this hotel for years. In, in towards 1997, until I think they left probably uh, 2005, somewhere there when they left Brighton and home in UK. And they were just partying with the president, sending the money. And then they've come in there, they've been given hierarchs and stuff like that. We're not going to go anywhere in Zimbabwe uh, with this government. I would just, uh, it's, 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 it's sad. It's sad, it's sad, it's sad. I can't even see anybody who's coming in there and think that maybe there might be a spark. Maybe there might be this. It's now it's like he's on his last thing. And the arrest of some of the MPs that we're seeing here, it's intentionally just to be able to reduce some of the members of, uh, the opposition members of parliament to give the ruling party two-thirds majority in there and for them to be able to make some changes, some draconian changes onto our constitution as well and continue to abuse us for the so many years. Um, the Sadak route, I don't know, but if we don't change ourselves as well and take action to say that enough is enough, no one is going to change it for us. No one is going to change for us. But people are angry. Well, what we witnessed at Barber Fields on the weekend there, people are angry. The anger is up to their neck. Any little thing is just like a keg of, uh, of fire just waiting to blow up. Anything little is just waiting to blow up in the air. 
And these guys are just continue to poke us with this cabinet to say, what are you going to do? And this is it. If you, if this statement to say that if you're not happy with the cabinet, go and become your own president and elect your own president. How dare he says that? How dare he says that? And the IC, the, the, the information minister, everything is just, yeah, it's, uh, I'm, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm over it. This is all I have to say this morning. It's, it's nothing. We're not going to go anywhere. People just have to get a passport and try to leave Zimbabwe. It's very unfortunate. Uh, thank you. Good morning. Well, thanks so much, Mandaza, for that contribution. I'm looking at an article here from site uh, where women's organization in Zimbabwe have condemned uh, the law representation of women in the new Lapurin cabinet. I'm only seeing six females met in the cabinet list. Uh, okay. These are Kes Coventry, that's the Minister of uh, Sports, Arts and Cal Recreation. Uh, yeah, And then Sam Sunyoni for Industry and Commerce. Tatenda Mavetere for ICT and Postal and Korea Services, Barbara Roads for Tourism and Hospitality Industry, uh, Monica Mutswanga for Women's Affairs, Community and SMS Development, and lastly, Opa Muchinguri Kashir for Defense. Only mm -hmm. six made it into the cabinet. Mm -hmm. This is what the same number in 2018. Mm -hmm. So out of the issue of gender equality again, so say, the NDS one speaks of the gender mainstreaming, right? Mm -hmm. uh, not leaving anyone behind, uh, not leaving any place behind, but some women have been left behind in terms of gender representation in this cabinet. Mm -hmm. Quite true, Brighton. And, uh, you know, yeah, it looks like we still have a long way to go in achieving gender equality and yeah, it's quite sad because I, I feel we are really, really uh, losing out. And uh, I'm sure there are many, many capable women mm -hmm. in that parliament who could have made it to that list there. But yeah, uh, let's move on to another speaker. Good morning, Jabulo. Uh, good morning, good morning, uh, non Sunshine Brighton. And uh, mm -hmm. good morning to everyone who's in your uh, space uh, this fine morning. Um, hey. Guzi, my man, must wanna lay up in a even lay. It's a bit tight, and uh, it shows that uh, uh, we we are not going anywhere as a country. You know, mother piggy team ya kubon uti team le piggy we yezo se representa yezo zala to make us win as a country. Then, yo, we 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 are not going anywhere uh, because I was looking at the the reputation of ministries, creation of unnecessary ministries. You have Chris Mtswanga there in, in all veteran affairs. Then you have uh, Opa, you know, being the defense and all veteran, what, what. So wh why was that? Is that not reputation of ministries? And then now there's expansion information, ICTs separated. Uh, how do these things? Uh, I feel there's just a lot of... Uh, a duplication of responsibilities that could have been done because the the state where we are as a country we are crying and we are saying uh, we don't have money to do certain things uh, things are not going well but we seem to be enjoying uh, ex uh, you know spending uh, on things that are not necessary like having a big cabinet then you have issues that have to do with even when you look at uh, uh, the appointment of uh, <coughs> the Nangakwas to the uh, cabinet you know and to other senior positions it's uh, it's not right because it smells nepotism and uh, I feel a lot of potential people that could have done their job very well uh, should have been appointed but uh, because the their proximity to the president that's all that matters now this is why some of them have been appointed why am i saying this if we were to sit down and look at their cvs to say what kind of work have these guys done before because some of us we don't really know about them and we don't know what they've done before so we are only seeing them coming up into the cabinet and the they are now participating in the in the in very important government positions. So it's it's a worry to me. It's a worry on the basis of of saying what criteria was used to 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 deal with these issues. And you, I, I want to also speak to the issue of when you look at someone like Chris Mtswanga. You know, I, he he has not always been a sober guy. 
uh, when you listen throughout he, the, the, his interviews and the way he, you know, he, he speaks uh, to address issues, he has always been eruptive, um, and he has always had that character which was which has not been sober. So when you are now putting him in charge of of a ministry and giving him that responsibility, uh, I think it, it's it's going to push in a lot of division, especially amongst the all veterans themselves. Because uh, remember that ministry is, is sensitive to the fact that most of the guys even that fought war are not even part of zanu pf or some of them are no longer politically active some of them belong to even opposition parties how is he going to bring all these people together the way he has spoken against opposition political parties and he is his claim to 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 have liberated the country as if he did it by himself and uh, everyone else was sleeping so uh, it's it's a i don't feel that was a good selection by mnangakwa to to put him in that position uh it was one of the most and uh, we we find that uh, i was listening to the minister of ict uh that lady you know we we put people that don't even have exposure when it comes to uh, things that have to do with their ministries that so if you put someone like that when we have well experienced people that could even know what's needed by the country so i feel uh, this cabinet is not ready to 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 uh, to take zimbabwe into another level or to solve zimbabwean problems i feel that they, 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 we are yet to face more challenges or we remain stagnant as a country uh, thank you so much, uh, Nonsansa and uh, Brighton, for the opportunity. Well, thank you so much, Anjabulo, for that contribution. Yeah, quite interesting points, uh, you, you know, you made there, Anjabulo. Um, as well, Nkosi, I saw you raised your hand uh, when Brighton was speaking about women representation. Please do go ahead with your uh, contribution. No, my, uh, my contribution wasn't directly that. The other thing, too, that we need to always remember, ZANU-PF ran this uh, for election with no manifesto. They did not promise you anything, even if it was a lie. They didn't promise you anything. So the next five years, you can't go to them and say there's no roads, there's uh, uh, the schools are this. You can't go to them and say you can't go to them. They didn't promise you that for five years. They ran with no manifesto. They did not promise you guys anything. So they don't owe you anything. They don't owe you an explanation of why the whole family is in the cabinet. They don't owe you nothing. You voted for them with no promises. So we do not know what the agenda of the government is for the next five years. That was not told to, to us. So whatever they do in Jabulo, so very so so we is but we see company abo. So Tina is either Ukachumba or Katranga. You just have to sit on the side and just take it as it comes. That's what that is. Those are these are real facts. That's what I'm saying with this whole cabinet thing is a distraction from the real issues. Number one, they do not promise you guys anything. So we can't sit here and complain about the cabinet. It's a distraction from the major issue. What are we doing to remove Zanu from power? Those are the, those are the things we need to be talking about. It's a distraction. Um, and then the other thing I was going to say, um, the third point I wanted to say. Um, yeah. I'll stop there for now. Well, thanks so much, Mazwe and Kos, for that contribution. It's quite interesting what we are raising there mm -hmm. on the issue of uh, the party manifestos and mm -hmm. also on their run to the elections. Quite interesting there what we are raising. Let's go to another speaker there this morning. I see your full answer, Philip. Good morning, sir. How are you? Um, my brother, how are you, Brighton? Can you hear me, Brighton? Yes, sir. Clear, sir. Please do go ahead. No, my uh, my question is not about it. I wanted to ask in that cabinet uh, because we saw um, um, just before the election in in Bulawayo, Amaketi having a hand, so nice. But all of a sudden, it's one Amaketi is a hand. Um, Ziaboya. I want to know who who was um, appointed the minister of development. Um, 
because we, we need to ask some questions. We can't get all of a sudden and say how much food we thought what things it become a uh, better. So you follow who was what you want to minister of a uh, power and um, development going up. Thank you. Thank you so much, I will answer for that. Let me just check here in the uh, the Minister of Energy now, uh, who's the Minister of Energy. Remember last time, uh, with a different minister, the Sultan Jim was part of the Minister of Energy, right? Mm -hmm. I think he was moved from that ministry. Uh, let me try to check now uh, who has been in charge of the Minister of uh, Energy. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get back to that. Yeah, quite interesting there. Well, I remember. Uh, the Minister of Energy and Power Development is Edgar Moyo. Edgar Moyo, right. Uh, Edgar Moyo, who previously was the Deputy Minister of Primary and Secondary, right? Yeah, I was the Deputy Minister of Primary and Secondary, but now he's in charge of uh, energy and power. And then, uh, so Tanjem was saying, uh, so Tanjem is now means of what? Mines. Is it mines? Okay, let me just say, yeah, means of mines now. Mines and mine development uh, is now so Tanjem, the, the issue of power. Uh, they spoke about Unity 7 and Unity 8 in Wangi before elections, even during elections. But now, as I'm against as we speak right now, I can't be so Yeah, you know? but they spoke about this issue of <laughs> electricity. Remember, the president said, Oh, I'm going to vote for the electricity, I'm going to vote for what, what? But now, <laughs> yeah. let's go to the speaker this morning. Paul Salani, good morning. Good morning, Brighton and North Lanka. Can you guys hear me? If you could just confirm. Oh, sorry, Brighton, can you hear me? Please do go ahead, we can hear you. Oh, thank you. Yes, um, this issue of the announcements, uh, cabinet announcements, is a quite an interesting one, absolutely. Uh, but first, uh, before I go, I go ahead with uh, my submission, I was quite uh, disgusted and sickened with um, the responses that uh, a fellow woman received, especially from another woman, Fadzai Mairi, where she was asking for her CV. And then Ostalos from Triple C put legs, the picture of legs, as if to imply that women have to sleep with people to get ahead in life. Um, that, no matter the apology that may come our way, will never erase that from our minds. We need to really start thinking about the things we say, and especially other women, once they make it up there, they tend to want to step on others or to forbid others from, from taking up space. And that has to be denounced in any shape or form. No one should be above that rule. Uh, moving forward, um, when you look at the selection that's there, there's nothing that surprises me in the sense that if you look at the issue of nepotism, we have it even in Triple C. I mean, there were enough Chamisa, three of them that I saw. Star Chamisa, is it Fungai Chamisa? There was a lot of Chamisas that I was seeing propping up in and getting uh, positions, uh, you know, aspiring candidates within Triple C. So if, if you're seeing also the nepotism now happening in Zanu PF, are we really surprised? People will come to you and say, oh, these are the ones in Triple C were selected, voted by the people. How do you know that those who were selected in the cabinet were not selected by the ZANU PF people as well, if we want to argue that stance? So at the end of the day, if we're going to be against nepotism in politics, it has to be all round. We cannot have one rule for one and another rule for another. That makes absolutely no sense. And that is stupidity to its highest degree. So if we, let's now start to focus on can these people deliver? They've been put in those spaces. Can they do the work? And for the sister, my sister who was saying that um, they didn't give us a manifesto, therefore we can't hold them to account. I don't agree. Um, and Zalu Piaf made it clear that they were not given another manifesto because they were still working on the pledges that they from 2018. And then it was part of NDS 1, NDS 2, the 2030, um, you know, um, reforms that they wanted to bring in. So I, I believe that there's more to it. There's nothing that you can't hold a, a, a political party to account for. Whether there's a manifesto or not, we can still hold government to account. And we have to recognize this. So um, if we are going to move forward, we need to start assessing whether those who were put in those cabinet positions are going to be able to fulfill their tasks. And also, one thing which we should not be surprised, everyone, if, if it was Nelson Chamisa who was president right now, he would select his own cabinet. Would we like the faces? I would tell you not. There's a chance that we'd all start complaining, but why is this person there? Why is that person there? So we shouldn't be surprised when ZANU PF is now doing it itself. The only thing which will surprise us is the fact that when um, Idi Mnangagwa uh, became president in 2018 and they removed the former president, they said that Grace Mugabe was trying to create a monarch 
for the Mugabe uh, dynasty. Now, we are now witnessing another dynasty as well. That should be the issue. So why is it now becoming like Imbaya Munangagwa? That is what we have to be dealing with with as citizens. Those type of reasons we were given as to the ousting of Mugabe, we are now seeing it happening right before our eyes. So we, let's be focused when we're dealing with this issue. And also, I would have loved to have seen Tendai BT there helping but if you've got an opposition that day a day they tell you zanu pf must go would you hire them would you put the make them a cabinet minister knowing that they can stab you in the back my answer is no i don't think that would happen so i'll end there for now thank you very much well, thank you so much, Abbas Salani, for that contribution this morning. Quite interesting. Uh, well, let's move on to another speaker. I see we now have more requests. Uh, good morning, Munamato. Good morning, Brighton. No, uh, no, no. Uh, Brighton earlier on said Urutikona today at 2 p.m. There's going to be a mayor and council meeting a... SC to all. I just wanted to find out are you guys aside gonna host this space or are you guys gonna be sharing it on your YouTube channel? We'll live stream it on Facebook. Okay, 100%. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you for doing so and keeping us informed. Now, let me come to my reactions on this uh, cabinet announcement and stuff. Um, oh, by the way, for, 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 for Bulawayo people, this is a time where the rubber meets the road and we are moving somewhere and we're going somewhere so i would really implore that we engage as well those of you that are there so that we can be able to move our city forward and stuff um now to the cabinet and stuff look um there's um one thing that uh one of my favorite uh public lecturers ever said um sandy Gi said Utikona, when you're confronted with the reality that your intelligence cannot uh, help you navigate, and then your intelligence is working against you. Whether we like it or not, um, we are very much days after elections, and we know very much the um, the elections were not free, were, were not free and fair and peaceful, um, whichever terminology you want to put it and stuff. But now we are confronted with the reality that our intelligence requires us to navigate. And if there is anything that we can copy from site, uh, you have got things like fact check, you have got things like promise keepers, you have got all those other things and stuff. You know, and when we look in our individual capacity, yes, we talk, we talk. But in terms of do we have such other intelligent opportunities to also navigate for the next coming five years to say, you know what, as we are going to the elections and as we have got these politicians that will be coming, we can take this data that we have collected for five years and present it to say, okay, this is what President Mnangagwa has announced as his cabinet. These are the certain track record that we have. Not just leave it to Herald, not just leave it to Daily News, you know, the public media, but we who are there, can we also look at those and collect that information so that when we come, when we are given another opportunity, we can actually use it. And I know it's a painful process to go over the five years looking back at the five years that we just came from and stuff. But moving forward, we have got an opportunity to navigate and how we're going to navigate will determine whether as a nation, as a people, as individuals, are we moving forward or are we still going to remain in this same full stop and this intersection of complaining and complaining and complaining. Now, if ever there is a way that we, I can put it to you reward talent or you reward, and if ever you look at minister as a reward or whatever the thing is, you know, honestly, uh, for me, I counted about 48 ministers, including the provincial ministers, uh, stand corrected, please correct me on that. But of all the people that I looked at that counted, both including deputy ministers and ministers, none of them have you ever seen, except for one, none of them have ever seen them doing something. We only get to hear them, even whether it's where they come from or whatever, you only get to hear them mostly of what they have done so as to be able to say they might have capacity to assume that position. When you look at the, the CV, as you want to put it, when you look at exactly Ube Pizingani, what exactly did he do? Upizingani, Wazwangani, Win, Wazwang Wenzan. You only look at Kirsty Coventry, who I understand when people say that she's a minister of sport but is incompetent. But when you look at within 
the framework of sports and entertainment, which a minister is supposed to, is a person who represents the, uh, the president within a particular field and, uh, and, and, and regard. And for me, she stands as one of the people. And also when I look at the, 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 the actions of Zim Cricket um, in the past five years as well, there's something that you can say, okay, cricket wasn't, whether it was her doing or not her doing, but it's something that has really held the nation at the time when uh, things were bad. But seeing that cricket being a sport and she being the minister of sport has kind of really gathered that recognition that yes, in Zimbabwe, there is a cricket team that has got really um, some, 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 some ground there. That's one of the things. So in as much as we can look at all the other whole jargon of cabinet members and staff to say exactly you can hardly pinpoint but you know you can pinpoint it to this one was a minister of this particular department but what exactly is in on and when i think about when i when i try and put myself my, my shoes into nangago's shoes and say why did he appoint kesti coventry i'll just look at the olympics and say okay it makes sense but all the other guys doesn't make sense. You look at him to the over years. We had Oguti. He was once working in Switzerland, uh, what, whatever, whatever bank. But in terms of what stride did he make? What exact change did it bring there? He was he just an employee? Was he one of the employees that um, became a senior leader within that bank because of the virtue of him staying there for a long time? Or did he actually uh, do some certain significant changes there that really impacted? that nation in a positive way. And if that's the case, can we address this issue of why is it failing with the nation and stuff, you know? And, and you look at those aspects and, and, and those uh, finer things. So yes, in as much as we wanna moan and we wanna complain and we wanna compare and we wanna look back and whatnot, but at this juncture is a point where we have to use our intelligence and gather ourselves as a people and as individuals with our system to say, okay, in the next five years, what certain, like, if any individual puts, okay, what certain five things, you know, maybe it might be um, production, creativity, strategy, uh, progress, just list those five things, and then you collect that data as the nation moves forward, so that when the next politician comes, and, and or, or whoever then within the spaces can rise to that and say, you know what, I think it's time that I also stand up and speak something, at least this data, this particular information comes in handy than to have a, a scenario where now it will be someone denying and someone accepting, someone denying, and it now becomes a game of year. And so if you look at the politics between um, Triple C and Zano PF throughout the, the, the campaign season, it was more of uh, um, it, this one says, this one says, you know, and, and really when you looked at, can you talk about moving forward? Can you talk about where are we going as a nation? Can you talk about a, B, C, D, your silence and your voice is silence because you are not necessarily uh, becoming or engaging within the present dialogue which or the present argument which the two people that have got uh, these muscles are pulling against each other. And it actually drives our focus in a different trajectory. But if honestly we're looking at moving forward, this opportunity and this ground that we have, what are the steps that we can take? And if you are a Bulawa and uh, you, you are from Bulawa, you're from Gantu, we have got one thing that you addressed today, 2 p.m. Let's engage. And yesterday, thank God that uh, Senator David Coulter was here. Lovely stuff, by the way, site, great stuff. And these are the things that we're actually looking forward to engage and be able to say, okay, what steps can I take? And then when we reflect on our world, we reflect on our businesses, we reflect on what we're doing, whether we're going to bed or whatever. Um, we look at Uguti. What exactly am I contributing and how am I engaged to carry that, the, the dialogue forward? And most importantly, moving myself from a political um, uh, 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 boundary and moving into as a person from Bulawayo, as a person who is in Zimbabwe, as a Zimbabwean, how am I contributing? How is Zimbabwe benefiting from me? Is it benefiting from me being an argumentative person and always looking at fault? Or is it benefiting from me actually doing something that benefits two or other three people? Um, with that, yeah, let me just uh, pause it there and uh, let me prepare to go to work. But Brighton Nonchancha, thank you so much. I'll catch you guys at 2 p.m. Well, thank you so much, um, Namato, for that contribution. Yeah, uh, interesting uh, points you've made there. Now let's hear from Shangani Warrior. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Nonchancha in Brighton. Thank you very much for the opportunity. So I'll try and touch on a few things that I've heard people say. 
Uh, I think the first one was um, there was mention about the incident at the football game recently. And I'm not sure who the person was, but then they started to try and make it political, uh, politically related. I think that's um, quite uh, obscene for people to actually take football hooliganism and that sort of behavior and try to put it in the same vein as uh, uh, politics. Uh, I think let's look at that as exactly what it is. It's not the first time that there's been incidents when uh, Dynamos and Highlanders have played football at, at BBF, and that's something that we all know. So I think that, uh, yeah, people should not try and uh, and put things in a position where they shouldn't be, because actually, you know, we're coming out from an election where other people are busy making a lot of noise, and I don't think we need to be adding any fuel to to people's anger as it currently stands. So that's the first thing I wanted to say. Then the second one that came up, I think Salani touched on it a little bit. There was a lady that came up here and said, oh, why did people go and vote for Zanu PF? They didn't have a manifesto. And I think Salani touched on it a little bit, but I'll, I'll re reiterate and reinforce that message. We did not need, I, I say we, by the way, as, as a Zanu PF person, we did not need to go out and put out another manifesto. We've got a document called Vision 2030. And within Vision 2030, it has got uh, three aspects to it. TSP, which is a transition uh, stabilization program. Then we move into the National Development Strategy 1. Then we move into N National Development Strategy 2, which is NDS 1 and NDS 2. NDS 1 was to go from 2018 to 2025. And we're not at 2025 yet. And an NDS 2 would carry on from that point. So we didn't see it being necessary for us to go off and, and repeat and regurgitate the same things that people who do uh, follow politics and who do follow Zana PF would be fully aware of. And it's also quite rich that uh, that person would still make that same point when we also find that uh, another political party had gone in and plagiarised a lot of the things that we had actually put down as we wanted to deliver, which were which are already contained within Vision 2030. So that's the that's this second part. Then my my third and final point, really, I think I find it quite interesting that people are coming here and talking about. Uh, ministers as if ministers are meant to come from that specific sector and be experts in that field uh i think even if you look in the developed world if you want to call it that right i think it's very very rare that you find every single ministry is uh, headed by a person who as an example uh minister of energy that they'll go off and they'll put an mechanical electrical engineer no they don't uh, if you go off and you look at the ministry of health they'll go off and they'll take a doctor no they don't usually it's usually the ministry of finance and maybe one of the sectors to do with security where you would have people who have served in those uh, sectors and i think if you look at um in zimbabwe Mtulingwe, right uh, as much as people would like to say whatever want to say about him he does have a resume. I, I thought two days ago, a, a certain uh, newly elected uh, member of parliament, they said, oh, can we see this person's CV? Well, actually, if you looked at Mtulu's CV in comparison to a lot of other people, nobody can touch it. And I'm sure that that lady's CV does not really look good for the job that she currently does for her political party, uh, since we've also found out that uh, they got into university through uh, nepotism and family ties. So so I think, you know, it's, it's very, very important that when people are coming up and they making such statements they are actually fully uh, aware of what exactly is the role of a minister a minister usually guys is a spokesperson there is a civil service where the technocrats sit who sit in the background and they're the ones who come up with policy and they put these things forward and the minister's job is to convey that message right for the people to say yes this is what we want to do but but however in certain ministries yes you do need to have a person who is uh, an expert within that field but in everything else i i, I think people are really really reaching uh, in all honesty but uh, this is what happens in zimbabwean politics uh, they try to look at zimbabwe as as an isolated uh, entity and they don't want to make comparisons with other with other countries uh, but however when it suits them they run to other countries and make the same comparisons so what i would like to say is guys election season's over the cabinet is set uh they've been chosen let's support the government and the people in those positions to help build our country yes we might be disgruntled because some of you lost in in the recent election but those of us who won we would like to unite as a nation so we actually try and take Zimbabwe forward. Because all some of these div divisory comments and statements that are being made, 
they don't actually help our country. And if you, if you love Zimbabwe, I think maybe let's give positive criticism or criticism that builds, not just to come out and be making statements, especially the one about uh, Ostalos, where my head had gone and said, can you tell us what her CV is? And he put out those legs. That's sexual innuendo that he was using to look down another woman. But actually, what uh, qualifications does he have to be sitting in, in, that, in that parliament? We can sit and we can say to you, some of us, we manage five to ten billion pound portfolios, but you don't see us putting out our CVs and saying, right? I, I think that's something that we need to, to remove from within our Mr. Zimbabweans, actually to say, look, yes, you've lost, but actually, can we unite as a people to actually take Zimbabwe forward? That's that's all. So yes, cabinet is said, guys. I chatting you can take over and go. It chungo pin them foro. Tiva geni kai do tese. So what is it? noise. Well, thanks so much for that contribution, Sangshangani Warrior, this morning. Guys, if you're just joining us today on the show, we're talking about the cabinet announcement. What are your reactions to the cabinet announcement? Please do request the mic this morning. We want to hear from you. Let's go to another speaker there this morning. I see him like, oh, onga ketiyo. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Brighton. Can you hear me? Yes, I clear. Please go ahead. Yes, my question was from uh, from the boss lady. Like, yes, she is correct. When she complained about uh, when she complained about uh, People are trolling each other. Yes, we can't live in a country of trolls in as much as we disagree in in everything that we do. Uh, so trolling each other is not okay, yes. But again, uh, as a, if, the, if the cabinet minister is uh, being uh, 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 what, appointed by the president, do we need to have qualifications or we need the political will? That's my that's my contribution. If there's a political will, the minister will appoint uh, the committee that is going to help him or her to fulfill that duty. Not that I'm ZANU PF as others have professed to be ZANU PF, but that's my view. To be qualified to do the job, we have seen it happen all over. But if there is a political will, those things are going to happen. My question is, do we have the political will? Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, Amza Tonga Ketiyo. Let's move on to another speaker. Good morning, Dobbs. Oh, morning, host. Uh, uh, before I go to the actual cabinet, I want to correct some of the things which are going on on the space about Fungai Chamisa and the, and the Chamisa, including Nelson and the uh, Starman. Those people are, are, they are just similar names. They are not related. Fungai Chamisa is actually related to the opponent whom he was uh, contesting with Roy Biller. I think uh, the majority you know the younger brother who trained on, on Twitter is Zulu. They can ask the him to say, are you related to uh, uh, your auntie? Uh, she is actually uh, uh, his auntie. So we need to verify some of the information, not just to run with it because the names are, are just similar. And, the, and she is not, uh, apart from that, she is not even uh, Shumba Muramg. She is Mamolo. Uh, those are some of the things which goes into, uh, at times we misfire on information without verifying what it is. The other issue about the appointment uh, where people are running on qualification, we are not really looking at the actual purpose of those the ministers like he. Even if we go to I, uh, uh, ICT, <laughs> uh, is it funded in our own education or in our secondary or primary schools? would find out to say the answer is really no. It's not being funded by the, the same government. But they wanted to appoint a minister for that. So it's like just creating a... Uh, some of them we are now just see as if they are just appointed for perks and benefits. It's the same like that the Truth and Reconciliation Commission or Gender Commission, where we did not see what was the purpose of appointing those commissions, despite the fact that they were enjoy enjoying the perks and benefits like the high court judges. Uh, 
there are other issues again where I even if I again even support that even like that is skills edit the ministry where they have school for skills edit. I think that one is they can just easy uh, fit it in the uh, a government the uh, department or government the employee employ, like the civil service commission uh, just have that department of skills audit they can easily audit that and request. Uh, schools across the government to say from Minister of Education uh, and audited the qualification from the ZNA, ZRP, prisons, and even to go to local boards to find out the schools of our own people within Zimbabwe and understand it rather than having uh, the whole ministry to do that. And the, uh, now we have the uh, uh, proportional or those the provincial councils in all provinces, but we still have those resident ministers. So it's like a just a reputation of appointing some of the people to just benefit without the, the voters ourselves having something to benefit from the cabinet or from that NDS one. I, I'm, I don't really see where we are benefiting because that reputation which is there to say we have a, a provincial council then a party appoint another minister to be re responsible for that province. So it seems the other authorities are now over-regulated. Think of Blawayo itself. It's a province. It at the same time it's a city. It has got its own council, one council, um, then, then one mayor, then one resident minister, then another proportional Good morning to you guys. Welcome to the Wednesday edition of this morning. Good morning, my brother. I'm very well, sir. Please do go ahead to the contribution this morning. All right. Thank you, guys. Um, I think I'll just want to touch on, I uh, think, uh, three things, if I won't forget. Okay. Let me begin by uh, talking about uh, Australia's issue. I don't have much of a background about it, but uh, the bit of what I got um, after that, I think, yeah, um, Australia's might have uh, dropped a ball. Uh, I think uh, he he made a, an apology, I know, but I think he has to go beyond that and just make sure really he gets out of it because that was an insult to every woman across. So um, I think, again, it's a lesson for him. He should think before he speaks or he does anything, knowing very well what the consequences would be for that. I mean, we're not looking forward to get a person like uh, Olas Ostalio's uh, uh, character to behave in the way that uh, he did. Um, I'm, 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 I support Triple C quite a lot. But uh, I think uh, Australia uh, can do better than that. But anyway, as human beings, definitely you do something wrong, like all of us do everything. Um, we, we, we make mistakes. Then we need to correct the, those mistakes by, by, ensuring, uh, by ensuring that those mistakes don't, don't happen again. We shouldn't do like, uh, you know, things just become normal in, 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 and then getting away with them. That's the first thing. The second thing, um, I need to... Uh, um, I think I need to uh, bring my view, a different view from uh, these other gentlemen that spoke. I know I mean, this other guy called what, Shangani and another lady, I understand, okay, they, 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 they support uh, ZANU-PF, definitely they will support uh, ZANU-PF even when things are wrong. Um, I said I support Triple C, this is this reason why I'm saying uh, Ostalo's doing was wrong. So we need to be to be to be to be uh, straightforward and 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 look at things without having to uh, side by our our party even when we know they are they are wrong in in whatever they do. So uh, this uh, Shangani gentleman says um, uh, there's nothing wrong with um, or, or, I mean he talks about the uh, the manifesto of uh, of 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 2030 vision 2030. Uh, to me that is an admission and a confirmation of. And say uh, you, you you have got a vision 2030 where your manifesto uh, you didn't have the manifesto this time around. What's the point of having the elections? The elections go with the manifesto. If you don't have the manifesto, then you have you'd have admitted that you have failed. If you you, you have been in the government, like 
Republicans. ZANU-PF has been in the, in, in the government. That was an admission that definitely they are not going to be able uh, uh, to carry out because uh, they have made the promises for 43 years. They can't continue uh, making all those uh, false promises because they have lied in, in every aspect. So they don't have anything to lie now. So that's why the reason why they decided, no, we're not going to have a manifesto this time around because We've exhausted all of our lies. What are we going to say to the people? If we we recycle all these lies that we've been saying, like, for example, I'll put the, the, the free education story. The free education story has lost its kind of uh, weight. It has lost its kind of color. So they realize that should we put that... Good morning to you guys. Welcome to the Wednesday edition of this. It's a problem. Nothing, nothing to tell the people. You can't say you've got a, a, a vision 2030 when you know very well, maybe in five years, you'll be out of here. So you have to work around your five years. Make sure you get done with your five year kind of manifesto and your job to prove to people that, guys, we promised you this. This is what we've done in those five years. Now we've got another five years that we're promising you. You can't tell me that you've got a vision 2030, 10 years kind of, uh, of, 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 of manifesto that you had. This is not your country. I mean, in five years, that's why we've got the five-year kind of, uh, of, 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 of elections. So uh, you can't overlap. If, if you happen to have people have voted you to the next uh, kind of a thing, have that manifesto and work around it. That's the reason of the manifestos. That's the reason people have to, to, uh, to look at that, that you have promised us. So in a way, they've run away from being held accountable because now people are saying, but you have promised us this. Where is it? There's nothing. Now let's go on with it. Now it's just a rudderless kind of a, of a flight. Now we're going to plunge because now, like another speaker has spoken, you, you can't hold them to anything. What is it that you're going to hold these guys with? Because there's nothing that they've signed for to say, okay, this is what we said, guys, we're going to do for you. So, uh, no, I don't agree with this uh, gentleman, Shangani uh, guy. No, it's a way of running away from the truth. Uh, it's just a confirmation of failure. Okay, I think the last one, the last one is touching on the, on the cabinet itself. I mean, guys, um, uh, uh, this is how Africa has fallen apart. We're allowing people to go ahead with, uh, appointing their families, right? We've got five. Now, our, 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 our current president, has got, all of them are five. Five people there who make, including the guy who is in the army, is five people, right? Now, you tell me, we, we, we say, no, all is fine. There's nothing wrong with all this kind of thing. That's nepotism, clearly. What is nepotism? What is nepotism if this is not it, all right? What is nepotism? Okay, I don't understand. I don't know with the Chamisa uh, stories uh, about the synonyms, but the, another gentleman just came in here trying to, 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 to say whatever it is. But let me say, the difference now comes in this aspect. Uh, the people who are voted by people outside is completely different with the people that are selected by the president. The president has selected his own children here. Next, next maybe in two, three years, we'll have other ministers. Our president has got many children. Now, we may have half of those, of those ministers being, being his children. What are we going to say about it? I mean, having more than two people in the cabinet being of the, of, 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 from the same family, completely that then says something completely different from what we look forward to see a better country. Our country is going backward because we allow things just to fall apart. It's, it's so terrible. That, that cabinet there, apart from you know, these other children, it's just a recycling and recycling. Those guys are just there to eat money and nothing else. So actually, we're going backward. We're not, we're not stagnant. We are actually back, uh, going backward. Thank you very much. 
Well, thanks so much for that contribution this morning. Guys, so just joining us for wrapping up the space this morning and looking at the cabinet announcement, what are your reactions? Yeah, people are speaking about different things, issue of nepotism, there, uh, some are saying issue of experience, issue of qualifications. Uh, to, 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 to cabinet meters be, be, be experienced and qualified for every sector they're deployed to. For example, look at this. Suppose I'm bright and I'm a journalist, right? I'm deployed to do ICT as a means of ICT. Do I know about ICT as a journalist, right? Mm -hmm. uh, suppose two, 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 two years later, I'm reshuffled to go and uh, head the OMA phase. But I'm a journalist. Do I know the issues of home affairs? Less the years that I'm deployed to go and do the agriculture, I said, do I know about agriculture? Those issues now, should they be qualified? Should they possess skills for them to be deployed to a different ministry? Yeah, uh, let's hear from Tendai. Good morning, Tendai. Tendai, are you there? Morning, morning, morning. How are you? I'm very well. Uh, please do go ahead with your contribution. Yes, yes, yes. And I, I, I had a couple of points, but I, I, I think the last speaker uh, put them across very well. But what I want to say is that uh, there's nothing that has changed in, in our body politic, the way the country is, is, is being run and the way the, the selection of cabinet meetings has, has been done. Uh, so I'm trying to check if my network is proper. I think this thing of, of, of ministers in Zimbabwe has become an issue of tokenism, of uh, appeasing those who have uh, contributed to the success of ZANU-PF, either by hook or crook. There's nothing for the people, to be honest. Whoever was trying to sanitize these kind of selections, it's, it's nothing to do with uh, the people, if I may say. What I realize is that uh, this is the 21st century. You can't say the knowledge of a minister in a particular, min in a particular ministry is not of uh, fundamental importance. What, what, what vision can you drive if, if, if you are not knowledgeable in a particular ministry? Am I audible? I think my network is... Yes, you are clear. Please do go ahead. We can hear you clear. Yeah, so, so, so fundamentally... If you look at the at, 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 uh, at other countries now, we have technocrats running ministries. And uh, the basis of that is that uh, countries are being futuristic in everything that they are doing. You can't take that uh, minister who is even uh, failing to, to connect those about ICTs and then you expect us to drive uh, the country in terms of AI, in terms of productivity, in terms of all these uh, technologies that are emerging. When someone who is, you, you can tell that th these are the people who are, who are, who are going to get uh, desktop computers to a rural area and uh, they connect them and then they cut ribbons and that's development for them and that is ICT for them. You understand? So the, the, the issue to say that we don't need ministers who are very knowledgeable in a particular ministry is just emphasizing and regurgitating the body politic of ZANPF that to be a minister it's, it's, you are, it's, it's a token of appreciation for some uh, role that you have played in, 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 in maintaining and sustaining ZANPF. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, uh, Tendai. Now let's hear from Hard Worker. Good morning, Hard Worker. Good morning, CC. How are you this morning? Uh, I just want to say to, to, to just say a few words actually. Uh, there was a guy who was talking about ZANU-PF uh, needing a manifesto. It was not necessary for ZANU-PF needing a manifesto because ZANU-PF can just do whatever they want. So it's not necessary that they should have a manifesto. Uh, the second thing is the cabinet is just too big for a small country like Zimbabwe. I, I don't think it's very necessary anyway. And uh, the issue about ne nepotism, you know, that's the NOPF kind of politics. They do whatever they want. The president said it exactly. When you are, the, when you are going to be the president, you can select your own people. So we put that to bed. And the other thing is, uh, why do we continue in talking, talking? We talk, we talk, we talk, we talk. What are we doing? What are we doing exactly? What are we getting after this talk? That's another thing which I don't understand. We continue, we talk, we complain, we talk, we complain. Zanubev will come again 2000 and what, 28, whatever, they will win elections. Hook by hook or by crook, 
they can ju just do that and we continue to talk and talk and talk and talk. i don't know what what are we doing as zimbabweans we are just good in talking that's what we are good in, in doing and complaining and zero action zero action anyway i uh, think you guys goodbye Well, thank you so much, uh, hard work, and everybody who came through and shared their thoughts on today's topic. Quite interesting uh, points that you, all of you guys made and, uh, you know, interesting as well. Yeah, guys, thanks so much for joining us this morning. It's quite quite an interesting and also intriguing uh, conversation we spoke about today, uh, reflecting on the cabinet announcement that made by that was made by President Emerson Nanga a few days ago. Quite interesting there. And quite an interesting timeline that's happening today. Yo, man, uh, people are talking about ministers, ministers of ICT, and so on and so on. But remember, 2 p.m. side is going to be live streaming for you guys, the, Bula, the full Bula City Council, the first uh, full Bula City Council uh, meeting. Uh, please head on to our Facebook page at 2 p.m. We're going to be live streaming in that meeting there live. 